Anyways, all the masks came off and Hashem revealed that not only is he completely in control of the entire natural world, but he changes and manipulates the very heart of Pharaoh, right? And I really believe that if we have the presence of mind to read all of this with prayerful intention, that we not only um, you know understand it, but that we participate in this revelation, then we'll be able to really shatter the idols that we have in our own hearts. Because if we said every character in the Torah is on some level, in some dimension within us. We all have a little Yishmael, Ishmael in our hearts. We all have a little Esau inside of us. We all have some Pharaoh in our hearts too. I know that I do. And when it comes down to it, the spiritual Egyptian within us believes that everything is generated here in this world, in this dimension. And that if we have, have something, if we have anything, we, we deserve it, <clears throat> right? Because we earned it, because we made it happen for ourselves. That's the real world, the way the real world works. The spiritual Egyptian believes that ultimately we're in control, and on some level we are gods, right, if we're in control of things. So this, of course, begs the question, and I want to sort of bring it together with this. If everything is ultimately Hashem, then what is in our control? Well, uh, the sages of Israel uh, share a teaching. I've shared it with you before in the past because it's made its way into my, you know, my emergency truth kit that I turn to in like moments of confusion. So this made the cut, right? And those words are, that everything is in the hands of heaven other than one thing. One thing, yirat shamayim. Yirat shamayim. Some people define that as fear of God, but quite literally it means yirat, to see Hashem. The only thing truly that we have in our hands, that we have any true control over is one thing. Whether we see Hashem and experience Him as the moving force of our lives or not, meaning that all outcomes, everything that happens is in Hashem's hands. We have no control. The only thing we can control is our experience of the journey, our consciousness, our awareness. And I remember a beautiful example shared by Rav Arush in his book, Gan Ha'emunah, which is translated as um, the Garden of Faith. Or actually, I think he just leaves it at that, right? The Garden of Emunah. And uh, anyways, he said that there are two bus passengers sitting on a bus, I think it was from Jerusalem to Haifa. I forget the details that he used. Anyways, one passenger is worried sick, constantly looking at his uh, his ways, his GPS, looking out the window. Is the driver going the right way? Is he driving carefully? Is he completely lost? And the other passenger is looking out the window and enjoying the view, right? Trusting the driver fully without a worry in his heart. And the first passenger arrives at the destination, a frazzled bundle of nerves, and the other passenger arrives calm and collected and serene and really invigorated from the whole experience. They both arrive at their intended destination, the destination that's right for them. The question is, what kind of ride they had? And so, so I think it's up to us to decide who we want to be on the journey through this world. Do we see Hashem in everything or nothing? That's the question, because deep in our hearts, we know that either everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. There's really nothing in between. And so I want to bless, uh, bless all of us that we're able to internalize the truth of Hashem's deepest name, right? Yud and He and Vav and He, the tetragrammaton, we can internalize that into our hearts. This name that teaches us that Hashem is both fully transcendent and also fully imminent at the same time. May these portions really uh, help purge us of the idols and the illusions in our own hearts so we can cleave to Hashem and to His goodness every day of our lives.